What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time uh, watching one of my videos, I'm a second year medical student studying in London and I try and make videos to help as many people uh, as possible get into medicine. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, then please think about doing so. In this video, I'll be talking to you guys about the data interpretation section, which could possibly come up on one of your interviews. I know for my interviews with Birmingham and King's, we had a separate station uh, just for data interpretation and they put this on the website and they do tell you that this might be one of the stations. Um, so it's something you do have to be prepared for. Before I start, I just want to encourage you guys um, to stay motivated. I know that the MMI interviews is such a stressful period of your life. It was hella stressful for me. Um, if I take myself back there, like I can honestly remember like how stressful it was. But I can promise you guys that once you make it out on the other side, you'll be so, so happy. Um, so go through a stressful period in your life. Um, stick through it. Um, you know, believe in yourself, keep, keep trusting yourself, be confident. And honestly, one day when you make it, you'll thank your previous self um, for going through all that stress because it is very worth it. Uh, yeah, so just jumping straight into it. Um, the data interpretation section is not like further maths. Like, don't worry about it. It's not an like A-level maths. Um, and they tend to be um, the sort of level of maths that you had at GCSE um, or in your UK cap, for example. Um, it is kind of mental maths. Some universities um, require you to write something down if you want to. Um, but a lot of the time it is just mental maths. Um, it is a lot of the time reading off a graph or doing a quick uh, mathematical um, calculation in your head. And it's normally um, on something you've seen before or something that you have some knowledge about. Um, so don't worry too much about it. But it is a very important uh, station. Sometimes the question can be quite hard. Sometimes it's very straightforward. Um, I remember in one of my interviews, um, I can't say which one, but I remember one of my interviews, I found it really, really hard. The, the math station was so hard. And in the other interview, it was actually really super easy. Um, but just prepare yourself with the same math that you had in the UK CAT or um, in GCC. Today I'll be taking you guys uh, through an example question. I found this paper online, I went into PubMed and I just typed in like drugs um, and this is one of the first things that came up. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you do want to have a look at the paper. It's not really necessary to go into detail but this is just an example uh, of a question that they could possibly ask you. So I'll put the graph up on the screen somewhere here. Um, you know, pause for a second uh, on this picture or have it open in a separate window um, or go on the link in the description and find the paper yourself. The first question they might ask is to describe what you see. So I'll just bring this up for myself as well. So you really want to just explain what the graph is. Um, so for example, in this paper, um, what I would say is that um, it's looking at two different groups. Uh, one is a VAE group. So this is a treatment group um, and it's comparing the treatment group to the control group. Um, I'd also say that on the X, on the X axis, um, we have disease-free survival, um, so that's a number of years um, that the uh, treatment or the control group patients um, survived after the end of the VAE treatment. On the y-axis, we have the probability um, of the patient surviving. Um, so don't worry too much about the detail. Again, this is a very specific paper, but they will give you a lot more, um, you know, a lot easier uh, graph to read. So the, the black line is showing the treatment group and the gray line is showing the control group. And it's basically comparing the disease-free survival um, and the probability of this uh, between the two groups. So that's the first thing I'd say. So for example, you can say that at five years uh, disease-free survival after treatment, um, there is a 75% probability of this happening in the treatment group, um, as opposed to about maybe 70% um, in the uh, control group. So yeah, so the very first thing that you probably have to do is just describe what you see. Um, this is normally the easiest part because it's basically just reading off the x-axis, the y-axis, and trying to understand what exactly we're looking at and what exactly we're comparing. So this can be for like, let's say a type of treatment, it can be for a type of drug, um, it could be anything similar. I had something very similar to this in one of my interviews. So if you can understand this graph, um, then it is a great start. So yeah, the next question they ask after you understand the graph, um, they might ask a very specific question. So they might say, um, as I just said, um, at five years of disease-free survival, um, what was the probability of survival in the treatment group um, as opposed to the control group. So you go down the x-axis, you look at five year survival, uh, go up to the y-axis and look at the probability. So I'd say that again, at, um, at five years of disease-free survival, um, there was a 75% chance um, probability of surviving in the treatment group as opposed to the, um, the control group, which is around 70%. And um, what this shows me is that the treatment group um, is slightly better at increasing the probability of survival in terms of di being disease-free. Although it doesn't look very significant, and um, there's only a slight difference, um, but yeah, this is what I can, I can see from information that I've been given. The next question they might ask can be something related to the topic um, of whatever it's talking about. So for example, in this treatment group, um, let's say that it's a treatment for a particular type of... Um, C. 
six and a half hours later. Of um, lung disease, for example. Normally ask a follow-up question, like for example, um, if you're uh, prescribing a disease to treat uh, lung disease, what, what kind of things do you have to think about? So if, obviously if you're prescribing um, a drug to a patient, you have to think about a number of things. Uh, for, first of all, uh, the safety. So if you have a look at the paper, they have a number of outcome measures that they looked at. So you can talk about safety. You have to think about um, how safe is this drug? How effective is this drug? What are the side effects, what the adverse events? What is the probability of the uh, disease coming back? And these are the sorts of things that you need to think of um, at an individual level uh, when you're treating a patient. And uh, they might also ask, okay, well, aside from treating a patient, what do you have to think about in the overall picture, uh, for example, in a population level? And what you'd have to say, for example, in this situation is that at a population level of you know, treating all these patients, I'd have to think about how effective is the drug? You know, there's no point spending loads of money on a drug that isn't effective. You'd also have to think about um, whether or not the NHS can fund this treatment, because obviously the NHS is funded by um, taxpayers' money. You need to think about how effective is this drug at actually targeting um, the disease and whether or not it's, it's you know, cost effective. I think the key word there is cost effective. Um, you, need to, you need to know whether or not um, it's worth implementing this drug um, if it will save enough lives for how much it costs. You also want to say that um, aside from just increasing the, the lifespan of the patient, you want to know how, uh, how much it improves their quality of life. Because if a drug increases uh, the person's quality of life for five years, for example, there's no point of having a drug that increases the survival rate, um, but it's absolutely horrible in terms of the quality of life. Um, so you want to think about uh, what is the difference between um, the quality of life and the number of years that, of life that is extended in the patient as well. Also, in terms of the population level, you want to think about um, a quality. So quality stands for uh, quality adjusted um, life year. And basically what it looks at, it's an outcome measure which basically looks at the quality of life of the patient. Um, and it's basically a way of um, economically evaluating the effectiveness of a drug in terms of how much the drug actually costs and how much it improves their lifestyle and the quality of life and also the, uh, length, of, the, the length of their life as well. So you want to think about not just the patient, but also the, the population um, as a whole in terms of implementing the drug. And again, once you answer that, um, they normally ask another uh, number of follow-up questions just to test your knowledge and think, ability to think about um, these sorts of things. So for example, they might ask, um, let's say they had a novel treatment, a brand new treatment that's introduced into the clinic, and you're not entirely sure um, if this is worth implementing um, and if you should prescribe this to your, to your patients. Um, how would you go about knowing whether or not this is the right drug for your patient? Um, and then what I'd say in this situation is to look at evidence-based medicine. Um, so evidence-based medicine is a very key aspect um, in medicine <clears throat> and in treating your patients. So there's a number of different guidelines that you can go look at. So you can go on the NHS website, you can look at the NICE guidelines, uh, you can look at the BNF um, as well to look at what the best um, treatment is for patients. So before prescribing any drug, you make sure that it is uh, supported by evidence-based medicine. Um, you'd also want to talk to maybe your seniors. So you'd maybe want to talk to your consultant and ask, you know, what is the best treatment for my patients? Um, there is some new therapies available. I'm not entirely sure if they are working. Um, you know, what would you recommend? So that is what I do in a situation like that. But yeah, this is just one example of what da um, a data interpretation station um, can be like. This is very similar to what I've had in my interviews. It's what I've had in my mock interviews as well. And it generally tends to be something that's not too complicated. Um, another example of something they might ask is um, to calculate a BMI of a patient. So they might give you the height of the patient, the weight of the patient, ask you to you know, calculate their BMI. They might also ask you to do some basic conversions, um, some basic maths. So for example, they said that a patient has come in and she's been given this dose of medication. Is it the right dose? Can you calculate what the right dose is for the patient? And then be able to communicate this back to the patient. They might say that a patient weighs 50 kilograms and this drug is supposed to be uh, 500 milligrams per 25 kilos. How much would you give to a patient who weighs 50 kilograms? And obviously you just have to times that by two. Um, just very basic um, you know, mathematics that you need to know. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much about the station, but definitely spend some of your time uh, focusing on practicing maths um, and practicing the things that, that could possibly come up. But yeah, I hope this has been a bit informative for you guys. I hope this has given you an example of the sort of thing that you might expect from a data interpretation section. If you have any specific questions about what they might ask you, please feel free to comment down below. Uh, don't be shy, just yeah, ask whatever you want. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you found it helpful anyway. Maybe share it with your friends if they're struggling as well. Uh, don't forget to follow me on my social media. Uh, click the like button if you like the video. And yeah, comment down below any suggestions that you guys might have. Um, but yeah, good luck in your interviews. I know it's a stressful period, like I said, but you know, you'll make it through. Just believe in yourself, trust in yourself, and I'll see you guys in the next one.